Hey guys, it's Layla. Today we'll speak about fatty acids and oxidation. So there are three types of um, oxidations. The major pathway for catabolism of fatty acids is called beta oxidation and it involves uh, the two carbon fragments being removed from the carboxyl end of the fatty acyl coenzyme A, uh, producing acetyl coenzyme A, NADH and FADH2. Now we also have alpha oxidation which is uh, a branch chain which is 20 carbon fatty acids it's called photanic acid it is hydroxylated at the alpha carbon by photanoyl coenzyme a alpha hydroxylase the carbon one is released as carbon dioxide and the product 19 c uh, carbon pristanic acid the third type is omega oxidation which is alternative pathway to beta which involves the oxidation of the omega carbon uh, the carbon which is most distant from the carboxyl group of the fatty acid it is a minor catabolic pathway for the medium chain fatty acids and it is located in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum of the liver and the kidney cells Okay, three reactions are important for uh, omega oxidation. The first, the fatty acid goes into fatty omega hydroxy acid and for that you need mixed function oxidase. After that, it goes to fatty omega aldo acid with the help of alcohol dehydrogenase and after that you need aldehyde dehydrogenase to get the final fatty dicarboxylic acid. Just three reactions for omega oxidation. Okay, now we'll move on to beta oxidation. It is a mitochondrial pathway. Now the transporter or the carrier is carnitine and this rate limiting transport process is called the carnitine shuttle. Now, the source of carnitine is from the diet and can also be synthesized by lysine and methionine in the liver and kidneys, which are amino acids. Short and medium chain fatty acids, they enter the mitochondria without the need for carnitine, but long chain fatty acids need carnitine to be transported. The inhibitor of the shuttle is malonyl coenzyme A. So how does it work? So first, the acyl group is transferred by carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1, which is known as CPT1, and malonyl coenzyme A is the inhibitor of this specific enzyme. It is also known as CAT1, being carnitine acyl transferase 1. So it forms acyl carnitine and regenerates the coenzyme A. This is transported into the mitochondrial matrix in exchange for free carnitine by carnitine acyl carnitine translocase. Now CAT1 once again transfers the acyl group from carnitine to the coenzyme A in the matrix, thus regenerating the free carnitine. Now there is beta oxidation of even number of fatty acid chain and odd number of fatty acid chain. I will speak about the reaction uh, later on. First, I will tell you about the energy yield. So it is very high. The oxidation of a molecule of palmitoyl coenzyme A to carbon dioxide and water produces 9 acetyl coenzyme A's and 7 NADH and 7 FADH2, from which we get 131 ATPs. Activation of the fatty acid requires 2 ATP, so that is deduction, and therefore the net yield is 129 ATP. I will show you how. Alright, so you know that from the previous videos that NADH, one molecule of NADH will give us three molecules of ATP. So here we have seven, and hence we have 21 ATPs. One molecule of FADH will give us two ATPs, so seven will be 14 ATP. P. Now, from the citric acid cycle, we know it's going to give us 12 ATPs, and this will equal to uh, 129. All right, starting with even chain of fatty acids. So the first cycle consists of a sequence of four reactions involving beta carbon, which is C3, that results in shortening the fatty acid chain by two carbons. So we have Acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenases are the first enzymes that act on the fatty acyl coenzyme A. 
Then they are followed by enoyl coenzyme, coenzyme A hydratase, which adds a hydroxyl group, and we get 3 hydroxy acyl coenzyme A. After that, the enzyme 3 hydroxy acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase will reduce um, the carbon, and then we have beta ketoacyl coenzyme A thiolase, which will finally give us acetyl coenzyme A and the fatty acyl coenzyme. A, which is shorter. Okay, with the ORT chain, it is the same way until the final three carbons are reached. The propionyl coenzyme A is metabolized by a three step pathway. So the first enzyme is propionyl coenzyme A carboxylase, and then you get D methyl malonyl coenzyme A. After the enzyme, uh, enzymatic action of methyl malonyl coenzyme A epimerase, you're going to get L methyl malonyl coenzyme A, and finally succinyl coenzyme A is produced uh, by the action of methyl malonyl coenzyme A mutase. Okay, methyl malonyl coenzyme A mutase, it requires a coenzyme form of vitamin B12, also known as deoxyadenosyl cobalamin, for its action. In the deficiency of this vitamin, both propionate and methyl malonate are excreted in the urine. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.